If you don't mind, take out your Bible. I saw many of you carrying it close to you. That's a dangerous book. Please go to the book of James. And I want to teach you some things and let the Spirit of God teach you some things about revival and power and how God can set you up to be the last day revival church. Wouldn't it be awesome if the rapture, a revival took place, the rapture would be excellent. But if revival started out of this church and spread around the world, why not? You've got everything revival needs. You've got everything that revival needs. James is my favorite book. Very different from every other book of the Bible. James was the brother of Jesus, so he heard a lot of stories, I'm sure. Can you imagine laying down at night with your brothers? And one of them starts talking about how cool it was to create the stars and the animals. And this is James, and he became a radical for Christ. You know this, I'm sure, but he pastored the church in Jerusalem. Historians say that he was murdered around 62 AD. But he lived this life of don't just say you're saved, act like it. Don't just tell everybody you're born again. Help somebody, love somebody, encourage them. James has these favorite phrases that no other gospel has. Faith without works is what? Yeah. Ooh, your people know the Bible. I love that. I was at a church the other day and I, I said, who is the first man in the Bible? And this guy said, Hoss. <laughs> Hoss. And I said, no, it's Adam. And he said, I knew it was one of those Cartwrights. <laughs> I want to challenge you not to miss a service this week, tonight, and the next three nights. It's going to be life changing. It already is for me. So who was James? A dangerous man, a man who loved God and encouraged you know, Columbus Day is coming up next week. Uh, Columbus could have turned back and nobody would have blamed him. But nobody would have remembered him. And I think Columbus was probably the greatest politician who ever lived because when he left, he didn't know where he was going. <laughs> when he arrived, he didn't know where he was. <laughs> when he got back home, he didn't know where he'd been. <laughs> and he did it all on somebody else's money. <laughs> Would you get this in your notes? Looking glass self. Looking glass self. We become what the most important person in our life thinks we are. That's a very important concept. We become what the most important person in our lives think we are. That's why when a child strikes out at t-ball, dad says, I knew you were going to do that. It's not self-fulfilling prophecy. It's looking glass self. Every day on the way to school, I would teach our children songs, scriptures. We memorize chapters. And th as they're getting out of my car, I would tell them, I think you're the best. I think you're going to change the world. Every day it was something different. And guess what? It's happening. We've got a daughter, Monica, who's in North Carolina, helps lead worship at a great church, and her husband is one of the vice presidents of Lowe's. So I want to go to Lowe's and get a ladder and, and some money from those people. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> We've got a, another daughter, Celeste, who is a therapist, a counselor in Fort Smith, and she has two master's degrees, and God is using her to change the world. We have two daughters and then a tornado. <laughs> Evan, you can call them terrible twos, but we call them terrific twos. Because everything he did I thought was hilarious, and I included it in a sermon. <laughs> he went through this stage of saying no to everything. Hey, how you doing, son? No. Uh, it's time to go to bed. No. You know, and after a few minutes, the kid's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I said, Evan, don't you say no anymore. I'm going to whip you. Do you want a whipping? <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> I would tell him every day, you're going to be a great drummer. You're going to change the world. 
Did you know recently at the uh, Country Music Academy Awards, he was voted drummer of the year over every other drummer in America? And uh, here's why. He doesn't settle for the good. He goes for the great. I asked him last week, are you on any number one songs? And he put his head down because he was kind of ashamed. He said, out of the top 20 songs, I get to play on six of them. When he received his reward at the Ryman Auditorium, which was so awesome, first thing he said was give God the credit. Amen. That doesn't accidentally happen, church. Amen? We've got to teach and teach and teach. Uh, there's something that Cortez did that you've heard songs probably about this. Some of the guys that he traveled with in the ships looking at what's now Veracruz in 1519, he said, burn the ships. Cortez said, we're not going back. Burn all those ships. Do we have a picture of Cortez? Oh, thank you very much. Took me four trying, but he, thank you. Uh, Colonel Sanders was rejected by 300 different companies. They said Colonel Sanders' recipe was not good enough. When he died, he had $10 million in his pocket. That's pretty good. <laughs> Amen. Listen, when you try to share with people that God is going to give you strength, I call it SW, SW, SW. Some will, some won't, so what? There are people who will reject you, but not everybody will. There are people looking to encourage you. So James chapter one, look at verse two. Matter of fact, if you don't mind, mark verse two, please. It says, count it all joy. Everybody say joy. joy. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. In other words, when things go wrong, learn to rejoice. If you have problems, you're a candidate for a miracle. Every problem in the Bible developed into a miracle. Verse number eight, I'm sure you have this verse already marked. A double-minded man is unstable in what? All, All his ways. You ever met people like that? <laughs> Hypocrites. I asked a guy last week. Would you come to church? And he said, too many hypocrites there. I said, ah, come on, one more won't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, if you let a hypocrite stand between you and God, the hypocrite's just closer to God than you are. Mm, getting quiet in this nice little sanctuary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be careful of being double-minded. They used to tease Abraham Lincoln about being two-faced. He was always making jokes about how ugly he thought he was. And the lady said, you're two-faced. He said, ma'am, if I had a choice of faces, you think I would choose this one? <laughs> That's pretty good. Winston Churchill was one of those kind of people who said, we're not surrendering, never give up, never give up. Winston Churchill said, the nose of the bulldog is slanted backwards so he can breathe without letting go. I love that determination. There's something about Winston Churchill that the church ought to pick up on. And that is, we are not going to quit. We're not going to retreat. We are not going to let the enemy rejoice. Micah 7, 8, don't you rejoice over me, my enemy, because when I fall, I shall arise. Oh, that feels good. So verse number 12, blessed is the man that endures temptation. Please highlight this. We all have troubles. We live in a negative world. If you're not careful, people will drag you down just through their words. But it says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So if things are going wrong and you're having some challenges, give God an opportunity to show off. I got goosebumps watching this baptism. I love it. I love it. I can't get it. I was baptizing a little six-year-old boy. And he said, I've waited all my life for this. <laughs> That's what he said. I've waited all my life for this. I love that honesty. 
Amen. So look at verse number 19. Put a star by it, please. Everybody be swift to hear. Be slow to speak. Be slow to wrath. Man, is that a mouthful right there. Quick to hear, slow to speak. There's times when you just need to be silent. I asked a lady when she was due, and she said, I'm not due. And I, I, oh, 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 I need to be slow to speak. It, it was a pass, but I was thinking about the cowboys, so I, I messed it up. <laughs> you're, such a good, you're such a good man. Thank you. <laughs> How about verse 22? Look at it, please. Be ye doers of the word. Doers. I love the word. I know you do too. It helps me to adore God when I read his word. We need to applaud him and just step back from the scriptures and just say, oh God, you're so good. I admire you. I celebrate you. We ought to hold up that Bible and say, I cherish this. I give honor to God, the author. He's blessed you, so you exalt him, and we live what he says. Verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We can fool ourselves. We don't mean to. But sometimes we think that we're somebody that we're not. And God is saying, No, don't con yourself. And when people come to you, to try to help you, correct you, encourage you. I know we all get defensive. All of us do. But the Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. And so when somebody says, hey, this is not good, what you're doing, what you're saying, it's not good, what you're watching, places you're going online, not good. Don't hate them for it. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Oh, that's good. Look at verse 26. This is what I wanted to get to. If any man among you seems to be religious, but bridles not his tongue. You ever been around that person? Ooh, mercy. Hard to, hard to hang around with. I was flying over Milwaukee one time. Storm hit. I'd been witnessing to the guy across the aisle from me. And when the storm hit, <coughs> lightning flashed near our plane. And it shook just a little bit. We were okay, and that's all that happened. But the guy across the aisle said to me, aren't you a preacher? And I said, yes. He said, well, do something religious. <laughs> so I took an offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> if any man among you seems to be religious but bridles not his tongue but deceives his own heart wow this man's religion is in vain it's useless oh I don't know how to say this correctly it never comes out right don't be afraid of being religious. That just means you're committed. Being religious means you're dedicated. You attend church religiously. That's awesome. You read your Bible religiously. We've let somebody take good words and twist them around. I want to be religious in my prayer life. That means I am dedicated and disciplined and have a desire to please God. One day, you and I are going to stand before him. I can't wait. He's going to talk about you and we're all going to hear it. Ooh, that just scared some of you. Did you feel that chill going through there? Mercy. Yes. I have a wonderful brother who's in heaven we mentioned a moment ago named Dino. Raise your hand if you knew Dino. Let me see. Oh, man, a bunch of you. 18 years he was our minister of music. We were very close in age, and we had so many children in the Hutchings house. Dino and I had to sleep in the same bed till I was 15. I hated that. There was our children, brothers and sisters, Debbie and Danny, 
David and Don, Dino and Diane and Danette and Duane. <laughs> Don't do that to your kids. <laughs> Had a dog named Dandy. We really did. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, and I just uh, the, the morning after our wedding, Carol and I got married, June, January first, nineteen seventy-seven. The morning after, we kind of wake up from that groggy, you know, and I, and I leaned over and said, Dino? <laughs> and I quote Carol, nope. <laughs> and I never did that again. <laughs> we were so competitive, Dino and I and all my other brothers too, but we were always trying to outdo somebody. I got up to officiate his funeral, and I opened his Bible, and there's a little note to me. Hey, Don, I won. <laughs> I won. I beat you here. Whew, it gives me chills. I watched as the nurse was pushing his bed down the hall at Mercy. He's going into hospice. And as I'm looking down the end of the hall, and there, there he is laying flat on his back, trying to win the nurse to Jesus. Who does that? Cancer's all through his body. He fought for eight years, and it's a great fight. He said to me, I said, Dino, it's okay to go to heaven. You sung about it all your life. He said, I don't want anybody to think I'm a quitter. Quitter? You fought for eight years. The doctor was weeping eight years earlier because he knew how much cancer had spread throughout his body. Dino is saying to the doctor, it's okay. <laughs> That's what he's saying to the doctor. Who does that? You probably have been to one of our heaven or hell dramas and Dino played the devil. And I got to be Jesus. <laughs> Only because I was the one to choose. <laughs> And you remember we went to Walmart and the lady at the door, sweet elderly lady, looked at me and said, hello, Satan. <laughs> That's really what she said. Hello, Satan. And I'm just, I don't know what she's doing. And what did you say? Yes, she thinks that I'm Dino and uh, the devil in the drama. And I said, no, I'm Don. And, and Dino passed away, and he's with Jesus. And the lady yelled out, I think, for everybody in Walmart to hear, The devil went to heaven! <laughs> <laughs> What's Jesus going to say about you when you stand before him? You ever thought about that? Jesus, Jesus. I know that you love to worship him. You love to sing to him. But you're going to have an eye-to-eye -eye encounter with Jesus. I can't wait. We found this cool picture of Jesus that kind of penetrates through your eyes, and you see, oh, that's the one who died for me. Took our staff to Branson years ago, and it was the passion. And there's six of us down here on the front, and they're bringing Jesus in. He's carrying the cross. And he has these Roman soldiers have these whips and they're smashing on his back. I mean, they're not letting up. He must have had some kind of padding on his back. Wham! And he kept doing that. Every time we just jumped. And then he stopped right there. And he looked over at us and he said, I did this for you. <gasps> yeah, I heard, heard the, uh, the same sound coming out of you that did to me. He left his place to come to your place, to take your place, to take you back to his place. Hallelujah. That's the good news of the gospel. We don't have to be afraid of loving Jesus. Well, I won an election years ago, and this reporter, ultra liberal, came into my office. Oh, how are you going to manage now in politics and not talk about Jesus? And I said, I'm not going to stop talking about Jesus. He's the only answer. And I said, I write Jesus on my hand every day so I know how to deal with your pastor, so I know how to deal with people and say, Jesus is not the problem. 
He's the answer. Yes. Say that with me. Jesus is not the problem. Jesus. Yes. So I close. I'm beginning to close. <laughs> One of the reasons our church grew so much is my sermons were short. <laughs> Did you hear the amens over there? <laughs> yeah. I'm worried about all the time, okay. I understand. I, I'm not going to say who was leading the amens, but Steve. <coughs> Steve. <coughs> <laughs> I wish you would invite a friend to come tonight. I really mean that. And, or if they can't come tonight, maybe Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Your friends know you're born again. They know by talking to you that your name's in the book. You're going to live forever with him. But I promise you, some of your friends are wondering, when are you going to ask them to come to your great church? So I'm going to put you on the spot because I, I'm loving being an evangelist. I come in here and spray it and say it, and, and then I say goodbye. But I'm going to challenge you to invite somebody. Just text them this afternoon. Or get on the phone and call them or whatever it is that you feel led to do. Here it is. If you might be willing to invite a friend to come tonight, lift your hand, please. Oh, I miss this part of being a pastor. That's encouraging. We better set up some extra chairs for tonight. Would you bow your head, please? Father, I thank you for the power of this book of James and how it works through us and makes us like you. Father, forgive us for anything we've said or done that's hurt you. We want to come clean to the throne and say, God, we repent. We worship. We thank you. And now we pray for miracles of salvation. Let this last day revival start right here, right here at this wonderful church in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.